Uh, and I never would have thought my insane love of pop culture and reality shows had a place. I always thought it was like my secret shame. So to be able to do this. Your secret shame. Well, well listen. I can tell this is the person who's always in it for content. Yeah. Midwest bangs. <laughs> Also, that feels like in 2023, you can't say that. Like you, like that's like you get on a list or something. Like you and I, I really was horrified that she did this. And that's why we're friends. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Just Saying Podcast. I'm your host, Justin Martindale. And what a Christmas miracle of an episode we have today. My guest is a podcast producer. He's one of the best in the biz. You've seen him on Jeff Lewis Live. You've seen him on the After Show with myself and the actual Jeff Lewis Live show. Uh, he's the host of the podcast, So Bad It's Good. It's Ryan Bailey. Ho, ho, ho. Oh, Santa. Wow. Oh, Santa. <laughs> it, was, it was me. I just <laughs> not you get really big, at all. You get really big guests, so I just felt like I wasn't enough. So you I uh, I wanted to carrot top it up with the Santa appearance, potentially. You is good. You is kind. <laughs> you, you is, is enough. <laughs> yeah, okay? it's, I need that every day. Yeah. That's my new ringtone is you just doing that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm so glad you're here. Um, we have so much to discuss. But first, yeah. we have some breaking news. Uh -oh. um, and I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but... I try to be on top of the game when it comes yeah. to pop culture uh, breaking news. We have reports that Kendall Jenner and Bad Bunny have officially split up after just dating for under a year. And I want to take this moment to look at some of their finest moments. And that's all. Uh, those were all the moments. That felt um, long. That still felt long, it's, actually. It still hurts. Um, well, and so close to the holidays, too. Yeah. Don't you think he would have held on to see what the Jenners would have gotten him for the holidays? Like, Kai, you know, like they would all give him some sort of new leather or something. Like, do it after the new holidays. New leather. New leather. Yeah. That, they, they actually farm their own leather now. I, um, I'm sure they do. Yeah. Out of the souls of all the children in their sweatshops. <laughs> um, but my God, Sarah McLaughlin. Just still gets it. She, it really does. Fumbling Towards Ecstasy is one of the best albums. We used to play that and then our second album, and I would bum out to that all the time. I love bumming out to music. Me one too. Of the, one of the best albums to bum out to. Oh, Mirrorball, Fumbling Towards Ecstasy. Like, she's going on tour now, the 30th anniversary. Yeah. And I want to go. And just think about all the work she's done for the dogs in cages. Like that's, but I hated that when she became a joke mm -hmm. because she was always on the late night infomercials yeah. where you would hear that and then just see dogs in oh, cages. Oh, the worst. Remember it was like one, one dog with like one eye and it'd be like, yeah. Here I am. <laughs> they actually need to have yeah. the past Kardashian Jenner men in there, like you know Scott Disick yes. and Bad Bunny, yes. and they're like, if you Lamar, can find any of these uh, men a home, yeah, this uh, what was season. his name? Who's which, what was Chloe's? The, the Lamar, one? yeah, Le Lamar Odom, and then Tristan Thompson. Tristan. But Tristan is still in the run in the hunt yeah. to embarrass her a fifth time by Chris cheating. Humphreys, all the greats, all of them. Chris Humphreys will always you'll see pictures of him now, and I think he's successful still in some fashion, but he's always there's a picture of him in a yacht just staring sadly into the distance. Which is a Sarah McLaughlin song, <laughs> yeah, exactly, you know? I mean, exactly. you can put her in anything. <laughs> but um, I'm so glad you're here. You and I have closely become good buddies. Yeah. Um, and you're one of my favorite things of the year is getting to actually meet you and 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 work with you because I think you're very very talented. Your podcast, so bad it's good with Ryan Bailey, yeah. is five days a week. Yeah, we we just went over to Betches Media and it's so it's so exciting to be with them but also exciting just to be able to do this. Yeah. Because this didn't exist, you know, like 15 years ago yeah. and I never would have thought my insane love of pop culture and reality shows had a place. I always thought it was like my secret shame. So to be able to do this, your secret shame. Well, well listen, you know, as a as a straight dude, like yeah, all which, your By the way, straight guy over here. Yeah, I know. I'm He's sorry. Straight. Well, let's not pat let's not oh, no. let's not spread that around. Let's not spread. I don't want to start that nasty but it was one of those things. All my friends watch sports and I would talk to their girlfriends or wives about uh -huh. the Kardashians. And I was always just so much more enamored with any of that stuff since I was a kid. And why is that? I think, I, I don't know. I think it's just something internal. God blessed me. Yeah. And no, I grew up on a street of all girls in Olathe, Kansas. And I think that kind of formed a lot of my taste in pop culture and pop music. Mm -hmm. And it was just always so much more. And I'm not an active guy. I, you know, I have big thighs. I'm just, I, I don't really. Which is great on this podcast. Yeah, I, 
I love that there's we love a, a dad lag. I love that there's a desk that hides my gargantuan <laughs> legs. And no, it was just one of those things that it just sports never appealed to me in mm -hmm. any sense. I try to appreciate it for my friends. But I would so much rather talk about celebrity breakups or what happened on a Real Housewives of Beverly Hills episode. You're a rare breed, Ryan Bailey. Yes. <laughs> it is really interesting because I was the same way, but, you know, for different reasons. I also was, like, not a big sports guy, but I was also not a big Bravo person. Oh. I was the gay guy who was not really into the housewives. So that's almost and rebellious. I know because I was just like, eh, it's, it's just not for me. I like the other, I like the bigger pop culture yeah. stories and all that stuff. But now I'm like easing my way in. I'm getting verse on the Bravo. Do you feel like you have to, or do you feel like I need to? I don't know. I think it's a little bit of both I mean, because I was for so long, I was so like, now nah, I don't need that. I don't need that. But now that I'm like getting a taste of it, I'm just kind of like, yeah, I sorry, like it. sorry, it's no Gilded Age. And they do have uh, good costumes. Sutton does dress very fancy. Sutton is definitely a Gilded Age costume shop worker. <laughs> like, the the finale just happened. I'm going to go on my Patreon. I'm going to do a whole recap of the season. Like, I cannot wait to talk about it because it was just so, so good. But, um, yeah, I'm definitely getting into, like, the Bravo aspect of everything and you have helped me you wow. have yeah you have definitely helped me because a straight man has finally helped a gay man you. do something in terms of taste exactly That's yeah amazing. Wow. i know i mean and you are matching the curtain behind you I so i mean you you are not doing <laughs> that bad either happy holidays. but i mean i definitely recommend if you haven't listened to his podcast it is one of the best bravo fanatic pop culture podcasts out there. You Thanks are just, for throwing well, in you, fanatic. That's, well, no, that's the big thing. It's, you do the research. A lot of yeah. these podcasts are just kind of like, well, this happened. Blah, 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 no, but we'll like, do you, line by line recaps. And the only reason I do that though is like, I grew, I grew up in theater yeah. and it was always like, respect the text. So everybody else will kind of do these. I'll do like gargantuan, like two hour, yeah. two hour podcast that nobody asked for, but <laughs> you actually then break down the text and you learn like, wow, okay, this is interesting what they're saying here in this monologue, what can we derive from this? But then it's just a chance to do stupid voices. I mean, literally, we'll do the after show and 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 we're listening to Jeff and whoever the guest is on and he has his pencil and paper and he is like, yeah, taking yeah. notes. I'm like, oh my God, like he is like duping the work. Oh, and Justin is just like, oh, give me this, I'm give like, me that. Oh, I don't yes. need to pay. I'm, I'm you talent. You call the sparkling water. Yeah. Yeah. I'm you talent. Bitch. Um, but uh, let's get into some topics yeah. because I would like to, I would like to discuss you know, you're a podcaster. I'm a podcaster. I want to talk about one of the, you know, biggest podcasters out there right now um, who announced after their first podcast yeah. that they are going on hiatus. Um, and it's just a big blow to the podcast community. We like to unite, yeah. encourage, lift up fellow podcasters. Um, but Amanda Bynes announced that she is putting her brand new podcast on hiatus just days after debuting the show. And she said, you know what? I'm taking a pause on it. Well, she went out on top. Like, you know, it's like, you're like, Did you. She? It's the only thing she's ever been on top of. <laughs> no, really. listen. I Well, she, and she said, she was like, well, listen, uh, I'm not able to get the big guests. I'm not able to get the Ryan Baileys, the Justin Martindale. Right. No. She said Drake, Post Malone, and Jack Harlow. And mm -hmm. she's like, until we can get these guests. <clears throat> and I was like, nobody, it, you know, people are listening to hear Amanda Bynes and where she's at now. Re I Have you ever seen Amanda Bynes in the wild? Y yeah. You have, yeah, but like in the in the weird era. I mean, it's like she has well, really yeah, no, I yeah, I was in the weird era, yeah, yeah, in the valley. Yeah, I was on Sunset Boulevard. I want to say not too far from here, and there we had a moment. It was me and my friend at the time, and we had it. We played a game called "Is That Amanda Bynes." <laughs> And it was just a thing with just <laughs> straw hair with a wig, the big glasses when she was like still walking around yeah. in the daytime. And we, and I, it was Amanda Bynes. It totally was her. So you won the game. I won the game. I do like, well, Amanda Bynes, you don't want her to go out too much because you don't want her to become like, 
You know, it's like everybody has sightings, sightings of Jay Leno and Denim yeah. or Andy oh. Dick back in the day. Like yeah. Andy, like I used to run a nightclub in like 2005. Yeah, 2005. And we had closed up the doors and all of a sudden like there's like this back door and it just flings open and it's just Andy Dick just walks right in. like With pants on or without? With, well, that time with pants. And okay. we had so many instances of Andy Dick, you know, instant, like everybody had an Andy Dick story back mm -hmm. in the day where we had to warn security of like, you got to lock these doors, period at 2 a.m. because Andy Dick will just walk on in. Yeah, I went to a party. Uh, it was like a Memorial Day weekend and and one of the comics here threw this like big party at, on Memorial Day weekend and there was a lot of people went into the guest house and there was all these people were like eating and drinking and people were smoking pot or whatever and Andy Dick was there. And I remember sitting there or him sitting there and I looked over at him and he was like, you know, I could fuck you. And I was like, oh God, is this, is this, <laughs> is this it? Yeah, yeah, this, is this it? Is this? So is that, was that your big break? Yeah. And that's, and the rest is history, you know? <laughs> well, oh God. That's so much better if he's like, I can uh, make love to you, I know, Justin. I was like, <laughs> oh, still got it. You know, mm, everyone calm down. <laughs> this boy's taken. I'm a big, bright, shining star. But yeah. we're, Amanda, to be fair, we're all, we've, we're rooting for her. Yeah. We want her to like succeed because I feel like she's just just been one of those like ooh, like tragic Hollywood yeah. stars. Child actor started on Nickelodeon, then shot to fame with like movies and everything, and then all of a sudden just yeah, I mean heart the, tattoo on the left side of her cheek, and then with the you know the TikTok videos she'll post, just like the one announcing the end of the podcast. I know you know it'll be like a lot of you guys are talking about my looks. I did get a needle. I'm like we're not even talking about that. No we're one talking asked. about this whole other thing. Yeah, and I don't know. I mean, I think she's one of those people we will consistently root for because we have such good memories of her. I know, but also, hey, I watched that and I, my first thought was I was like. See, podcasting is hard. It's not everybody hard. can do it. Not it, everybody. Not can everyone do can do it. it. This is this is next level league shit. Okay. I don't know. It's just it was one of those things where you're like, oh damn, because you want people like that to do good, to find a niche, to be able to like be out there in society. And I that announcement, I was like, oh, of course. But let's let's lest we forget. Amanda Bynes also wanted Drake yeah. on her podcast. But do you remember when she tweeted, murder my vagina? I remember exactly where I was <laughs> on my couch. I was on my couch and I was like, no way. Really solid tweet though, by the way. I was like, that's a great tweet. One of those trigger <laughs> memories. You're like, ah, oh, I remember. I want Drake to murder my vagina. Yeah. And by the way, that's still now used in like, you know, rap songs. And like, it's like, it's it stayed around. But we also at that point didn't realize, we we're like, oh, Amanda, uh, she's really grown up. Yeah. And then came all the videos of her in New York filming herself in the mirror, yeah. throwing out the bong outside the window. Which, what are you doing? And then she was wearing the Phil Spector uh, wigs when right. she was going into court. And that was like the tragedy. And it's been such a long road since. So I was kind of hoping that the podcast would be something that she could really put time and effort she into. She needs to start small. Get like... Get like an extra from Hairspray and talk about what it was like to shoot that day. She you can't could just talk go, to anybody. Anybody. Like, anybody would actually be interesting because she's doing it. Amanda Bynes interviewing strangers would be great. Not like a man on the street kind of a thing. Just like pull just like, like a deli worker or like a janitor. Just, and just look in and fear, talk. Yeah. abject horror the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like Amanda Bynes, maybe Amanda Bynes could even be a man on the street thing. He's the man yeah. on the street. There's the podcast right there. Amanda Bynes and wow. Boy Drag interviewing people on the street. They could do a uh, um, kiss or slap. That's always fun on a man on the street. It's, it's fun to realize how Amanda might get arrested in the future is through these brilliant ideas. You can't. Not try, you know. <laughs> Maybe it'll it'll help, but uh, but also I love that she was like Post Malone. I'm like, girl, no. Post Malone has great face tattoos. You have one, and Wait, it's that's not the conversation that great. of just going over the map of face tattoos. Yeah, she's like, I remember when I tweeted Drake. Remember when I uh, uh, I got a face tattoo? Oh, Drake and Post Malone. Those are my two first guests. No, no when no, she no, no. when she says that though, and I was like, I want to know more now. Like, what were the conversations behind the scenes? Do you have a podcast producer, or are you just sitting there going, we reached out to Drake, we sent a we, you know we we sent a PO box thing. He's not yeah. responded. He's and not was responded. Like, Podcast done. But I don't think they. I think she probably DM'd. Yeah, there wasn't like a hey, person bro. to reach out. It was just. You want to do my podcast? Remember when I requested you to murder my vagina? Well, I have a podcast now. That's the podcast. Yes. It, it could be a forensic files 
you know, type of podcast called Murder or, My Vagina. What if we just go, like, what if Amanda does a podcast just about going back through her old tweets and being like, you know where I was at this time? This is what I remember. I remember this thought and taking us through the artistry that was her Twitter feed. That would be it. So, Amanda Bynes, you're welcome. Hopefully some of those <laughs> ideas help. But, you know, don't take a break for too long because we do. I'm interested. I would yeah, like to know. I'm in. Talk about all that in the day, you uh, know? Yeah, I'm fully in. Give or just do the Amanda show, old episodes of the Amanda show from all that. <laughs> what a great time. All right. So we wish her well. Um, and here's another uh couple that we wish well. Uh this survivor alum, his name is Brett LaBelle. Mm. He and his boyfriend named Chris Stanley, there is a 26 age gap in their relationship. Uh, Chris is 23. The Survivor alum, Brett, is 50. They were mistaken this holiday season for father and son. But Chris is an old soul, right? Like, he's an old soul, 23. <laughs> Very old soul twink. Yeah. Just an <laughs> old soul twink. obviously what it is twink. that attracted to them. Just like Tiny Tim yeah. from a Dickens era. <laughs> God bless us, everyone. In a, <laughs> the body of a young twink. Yes. So, yeah. It, with a crutch. <laughs> um, go get your, go get porridge for everybody yes. in the town. I will, Papa. <laughs> yeah, very, just an old soul hero. Oh. Um, but they're pissed off. And I guess they should be. I don't know. Wait, they're pissed off they broke up? No, they're pissed off that they were misrelationship. Oh, <laughs> they're, are you kidding me? That's what they're pissed off about? Yes, because we have to be pissed off about things oh daily. And also, wouldn't you kind of like not want to get pressed for any of this? Like I, not keep, especially if you're the 50-year-old dude, not yeah. keep pointing out how young this guy is. I, yeah. Like, let's press release this. And don't they know that any press is great press? Yeah, now, nowadays, yes. Huh. Um, so yes, they... They were, they shared a TikTok video. Um, <laughs> wait, wait, they're still, well, good. So they're not, they're still focused on business. They're still TikTok yes. together. Well, the 23-year-old had to show the 50-year-old how to do a TikTok. <laughs> but once he was introduced how to how to do a TikTok, they posted on a, on their TikTok, and he told his followers that he and LaBelle, who is 50, were purchasing a Christmas tree when their cashier made the assumption about the relationship. He says, as I was checking out yesterday buying this beautiful tree, yes, it's real. <laughs> My boyfriend is handing the cashier his credit card, but I'm like, no, 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 no. Let me pay for this. So I get out my credit card and I hand it to her. The YouTuber said, okay, YouTuber. She gets all excited. She's like, oh yeah, nice. And I'm like, why is she so, so excited that I'm paying? And she's like, I believe the more you give, the more you get this holiday season. And I'm still kind of like, why is she saying this? <laughs> I just love the quoting of it all. <laughs> Stanley said with a laugh that the cashier must have seen the look on his face because she then asked, this is your dad, right? He recalled looking at LaBelle, who subtly shook his head to indicate that he did not care to inform the woman that they were a couple. So I'm just like, yeah, yeah, that's my dad. The social media personality continued, and I'm left wondering what the look would have been like on her face if I had actually told her the truth. So this is them. <laughs> no offense to this young gentleman, but this is, I mean. You, Ryan, love is love. I know it is, and I feel bad for it. Like, but like, and then this one what? does look like when it's like, come give daddy a kiss on the lips. It's it's the bachelor uh Kiss. So we had to we had to give each other rim jobs in front of this cashier just Ask, to prove yes. that love is love. Put the nog in eggnog. But th I mean, like this kid looks. It really looks like a, a pro wrestler and uh, like a little elf kid. I mean, this is giving you Austin Wolf. It's giving you, and that's like it's a giving gay porn it's reference. It's giving statutory. Like it's it, giving. Yeah, it's a little bit too much. But I also, you know what? I say go for it. But at the same time, you can't be like I'm offended. Because because yeah. like, well, but also then I think one of the worst parts of that article was the social media influencer said, you know, it's like right. if, you're, if that is the job title, you already know that everything out there that this, this kid experiences is content. Mm -hmm. And this is obvious content. There's no way this is the first time that that has happened at all. You know why you, I can tell this is the person who's always in it for content? Yeah. Midwest bangs. <laughs> 
It's always oh with a with a, a gay guy with Midwest bangs is always in it for just content. I like that the kid looks like the prepubescent Justin Timber. No, no, uh, Justin Bieber. It's he looks Justin Bieber meets Natalia Grace. Yeah. <laughs> it's very that. How old is it? This is the war on Christmas right here. Yeah, this I is mean, like let's put Christ back in Christmas. This but is embrace it. Like where have him dress up as Santa, Survivor Santa. Yeah, and you know the young elf twink. I mean, this is obviously legal, so we can say this, but that kid is getting probably hammered by that guy. Railed. Like, I mean, that is, like, you almost worry about his safety. That pole is going north and south. Oh, I remember that guy from Survivor. You he do? Different. Yeah. Do you watch Survivor? I do. I, I oh. just got back into it, uh, to, like, last season, and uh, I, I used to love Survivor. I, I mean, think that he... kid is actually playing a game of Survivor right now. <laughs> <laughs> Potentially. <laughs> you have to wake up with this man on top of you. If you survive the night, you get full immunity for the next challenge. <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> Jeff, the tribe please. has spoken. Yeah. <laughs> but, but like also the, I just keep going like then making you break up and then make a TikTok video with like as a couple explaining what happened. But then if that does happen, which it will, they will break up, I'm sure. The TikToker who has crazy in the back of his eyes from this picture alone is going to be like, I survived that relationship. Who's the real winner of this challenge? <laughs> like, it's going to be something along those lines. I do wish them. I mean, he looks like a nice guy. No, they both look like nice guys. I mean, it just is. But don't shame the poor Christmas tree worker trying to just sell a goddamn tree well, for visually, one month out of the year. And also, I'm sorry, but that kid looks way younger than 23. Good for him. No, great. That's, As yeah. a former twink, I applaud you. <laughs> Did you ever get upset about losing your twinkhood? Like, was that ever, like, Daily. a rough conversation? <laughs> like, was that a rough moment? Can we play the Sarah McLaughlin song again? <laughs> <laughs> and just have shots, shots of Justin. Justin. <laughs> I'm getting too much facial hair. <laughs> what? what are these? What is? <laughs> yeah, every day. No, I embrace it. Now I'm in my, my, my like, daddy uncle era or whatever the kids call me these I don't, days. I think you're too young still to be a daddy uncle, is Thank it? Thank you. I'm, I'm, I don't know what I am. I could just be, like, dad's friend. <laughs> I don't know what I am. Just get a straight shot in You know the what camera. I am? I'll tell you what I am. I don't know what I am. I'm a Christmas tree saleswoman. That's how I identify. <laughs> it's real. Is this your dad? How <laughs> dare you, madam? This will be your last holiday season selling trees. By the way, those are the situations where they're probably trained to say things like that because in case somebody has been kidnapped and the kids like blink <laughs> twice if you need help. They probably have like a panic button at Home Depot like a holiday, about kids getting like shoplifted, you yeah, know? A holiday angel shot. It's yeah. like, is everything okay? Yeah. Is this, this, is, this, is this your dad? Are you lost? Is Exactly. Are you lost in Santa's workshop? Oh, God. It's good to know that I can still get canceled before the new year. Absolutely. I, like, I feel like this will be the podcast that I do say something way over the line. We're honored to have you. <laughs> <laughs> Amanda Bynes, I'm available. I would love to. <laughs> Your produce. phone just starts ringing. We're like, holy shit, it's Amanda Bynes. Yeah. Hey guys, we know the new year is right around the corner, so what a better resolution to kick off your 2024 than eating clean. And that's why Green Chef is here to help. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating clean. It takes the work out of eating clean for you. It is nutritionist approved. It is delivered right to your door. It's the freshest ingredients with nothing artificial. I had a box delivered to me personally, and I was a little nervous and a little anxious about preparing a meal because I'm just so busy in my everyday schedule, but Green Chef has it covered. You can make a restaurant-style meal in your own kitchen for 30 minutes or under, and it is so good. And the best part about it is that nothing goes to waste. It is all perfectly portioned. You're not going to have leftovers overstocking your fridge. It is one and done and delicious. So go to greenchef.com slash 60 just saying and use code 60 just saying to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. So start your 2024 off right by going to greenchef.com slash 60 just saying and use code 60 just saying for 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Well, Big year for Beyonce, as well as Taylor Swift, but we're yeah. not talking about her. Beyonce, um, 
Who knew? Remember she had a theme this year? It was like everybody wore silver to my Renaissance tour and everybody decked out. And if you got the memo and didn't wear silver, what's that say about you? But the fans have left the thrift stores struggling to resell unwanted Renaissance tour garb (laughs) because they are just being bombarded with nonstop <laughs> silver. So the color for 2024 is not even silver. It's like a nice peach color. I'm trying to remember what the name of it is, but it's it's a it's like yeah. a light peach. Um but now the thrift stores are freaking out because everyone has donated all of their Renaissance tour gear and costumes to the stores. Uh I love the dollar store so much. Thrift store employee and TikToker at Mr. Venus Nine, which oh. sounds like a Beyonce oh, fan. I, oh, I like him. He's Mr. good. Mr. Venus. He's good. Yeah. yeah. Great content. Weird bangs, though. <laughs> Recently showed off a glittering array of pants, tops, and skirts in a video scoring over 36,000 views in one day. He says, I have seen nonstop silver for the last three months, um, in which uh, she shared footage of silver cargo pants, a reflective skirt, a sparkling two-piece suit, and rhinestone studded shoes. So if you're thinking of last-minute holiday gift ideas, go to yeah. a... a I don't know, a Salvation Army and pick up a rhinestone silver cowboy hat for grandma. I I wonder if that kid from the last one is going in there to get silver stuff The from the last story, the survivor yeah. couple. Yeah. I feel like that's another place that they could potentially be asked about father and son. Yeah, fair and enough. Do you think Beyonce is upset when she hears this? Of she like, has no oh, emotions. My fans aren't buying enough silver and it's like going down to the dollar store. But how poetic because... I'm wondering if in tw- I feel bad for silver yeah. because I feel like in 2024 we're going to start silver shaming. <laughs> and I feel like if someone's wearing silver, yeah. it's going to be like Miranda in Devil Wars Prada and she's going to be like No, you know it's going to it's going to be Che Diaz from uh, and just like that. <laughs> che Diaz in the new season of and just like that will be all silver all, all the time. All silver and they're going to be like, "Oh, you got that in some bargain bin trickling down <laughs> to a barrel of stuff as you say you know I, I i definitely maybe we'll see like an unhoused person and on the corner when with rhinestone boots and what do you think beyonce hat. has to do another album that's silver focused to try to like correct the market i'm calling it now r.i.p silver wow it had a good metallic run but i feel like once you like throw it in people's faces as much as possible yeah I like the dollar store as like a Studio 54 vibe now, though. Which is sad to say. Yeah. I love Studio 54. <laughs> and now it's like, mm. yeah. like you're gonna be you're gonna be out at some like club or something, and be like, oh God, she's wearing silver. <laughs> yeah, Ooh. I saw that at the dollar tree. I know. Oh, oh. we're gonna have to change the 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 name of Silver Bells to something else because everyone's gonna be like, oh, that low rent Christmas song. God, what is it? Poor? Yeah, it's giving poor when it's giving poor bells. <laughs> so I mean, it's your fault, guys. You know, you don't have to listen to Beyonce all the time, but I I, I am interested because I would like to go into like maybe like a Crossroads, which is like a um, consignment store yeah. here, um, just to see how much. Silver actually is can I, there. Can I tell you something about the Beyonce movie real quick? I went yeah. and saw that Renaissance movie, yeah. and I was actually, I'm a Beyonce fan. I was really excited, uh, and I'm not going to bust this person out, but I was with a group of people, and it uh, starts, I'm like, starts with two slow songs, but I'm into it, loving it, uh, had maybe an edible or something like that, really enjoying Which it. Which you should. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I'm fully decked out in Dollar Tree Silver, and I look, <laughs> I, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then Dollar this, and this person says, like 20 minutes in, goes, Hey, I'm gonna leave. I just realized I don't like Beyonce. And I was like, What? what? <laughs> it was like, it's a three issue. She's like, Yeah, we've got like two and a half more hours. I don't think I can do this. And I legitimately, and I was a little, I was like, I had an edible, so I was like, thought it was like a joke. And she left. And she truly <laughs> left. So we were with, we were just like, and I was like, also, that feels like in 2023, you can't say that. Like you, like that's like you get on a list or something. Like you and I, I really was horrified that she did this. But what an epiphany after song number two to be like, 
But all, don't you know going in what you feel she about Beyonce? I don't think like she how can. did you even? And also, just like I've sat through so many shitty movies in my yeah. day, like you can't you you can't even just take a nap. It was those nice leather recliner seats. That oh AMC yeah, Evan has. passed out at Wish. Yeah, exactly. You're an a like, AMC Stubbs member. Yeah. You know, like I was like, how easy is it? And then just, but then there was something in it of like, I wish I lived my life like that. Like if I'm not happy, I just leave. I just just jet. I've never left a movie. Yeah, me either. Me, never, I would, it, it, always, it was it religious. Always, I, I couldn't do it. Like, everyone's like, oh, yeah, we walked out after. But, like, that's the movie. You could ruin this person right now. No, I'm not going to do that. But I will say, remember, oh, just Jeff Lewis, you know, he walked out of the Taylor Swift era's movie. And that's why we're friends. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know, because I, like. Well, but it feel, is weird. Like, you're there. You're there. You're there. But then, like, you're looking around and thinking, I can't trust anyone here. Like, that's my survivor. <laughs> that's it. Like, I'm sitting there and I'm like, I have to make alliances with someone in this theater and I don't think I can trust anyone. If I could vote anyone off, it'd be this entire theater of well, people. But then I started looking around like which one of my friends is going to leave next? Like wh who's oh, the next to go? Was like, be a trend. Well, then I was like, I because I want to stay for the whole movie. Like I want to stay for the credits. I'm going to do the whole thing. Were and you then, guys dressed up? Did you have like your silver pasties on and all that? Yeah, no tassels, yeah. the whole day, like good, butt good, plug, good. all of it. Like <laughs> uh, it was so uncomfortable. Three hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Cozy. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, three I hours I right know. I've never, I've not told that story yet because I've been almost like scared for this person. Like mm. I've been scared to name this person because I feel like once you name do that. Yeah, name, name him. him. Name him. Name him. Uh, name him, Kyle. It was Sutton's track. It um, was. Well, I feel like Williams. Sutton would walk out of the Beyonce. Yeah, I don't like this. <laughs> I say, I say. She, do, she don't know what she's doing up there. Yeah. <laughs> she says, I drank. Yeah, I drink. Uh, oh, you give me some Dan Fogelberg, not God. this Beyonce. Uh, what? A, that's I. I really would like to meet that person because I think that'd be a, a great like that moment. Like I feel like that's that um that's so Raven meme where it's like, you know, what I'm talking about where the, yeah. they go in the eye and you see yeah. this Beyonce and it cuts back and the friend's like, I'm good. I don't need to yeah. sit through this anymore. <laughs> but what? Am, well, because then I was like. Well, what happens down the line? What if we're at this place? Are you just going to leave this place? Or are you just going to leave it? Like, then I got paranoid about other places that I would be at this person where I'm like, at any moment, she could just bail. Just bail. She's like, I'm going to go check out Oppenheimer. Like, like, yeah, Oppenheimer? You, but, oh, Oppenheimer. Yeah. Oppenheimer? No. <laughs> Still haven't seen it. That's a movie that I'm like, that's three hours long. I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, I loved uh, Barbie um, and Oppenheimer. <laughs> yeah. Barbie and Oppenheimer. Barbie and Oppenheimer. Whatever. <laughs> All right. Speaking of O. Yeah. Oprah Winfrey. Yeah. Says she is done with the shaming. She's an, she's had enough. She has come clean about using a weight loss medication. No. To prevent her constant battle of yo-yoing. Yeah. Um, and she said something that everyone's like, name them. <laughs> Name him. Oprah Winfrey admitted to implementing a weight loss medication to achieve the results she wanted. Yeah. I now use it as I feel I need it as a tool to manage not yo-yoing. The media mogul shared in a new interview. She has learned that noting she has dealt with no shortage of scrutiny while trying to find a wellness regimen that worked for her. So she is on a wellness... Yeah. Medication? <laughs> we don't know what the name of it is. Sure. But much like Oprah, I'm going to say it starts with an O. <laughs> it's Oprah Zempic, everyone. So she says she is taking the power back in her own hands, now using a holistic approach that includes regular exercise and other lifestyle alterations <laughs> in addition to the medication. Yeah, I was like, it's good. the medication is doing the heavy lifting, but I'm also praying on mm -hmm. top of it. And I think that, mm -hmm. I mean, also, you, I feel like, also, just imagine Oprah's day-to-day -day life that she was getting so much pressure that she finally had to reveal. Like, you know, it's like, like that she had to, because this could have just gone by the wayside, but she must, on her day-to-day, -day, just getting shouted out like, who's that big? Yeah. yeah, like, I think it's wild that she has to do this, and it almost makes me think that in the new year, we're going to see Oprah be the face of Ozempic. Like, Work there's it. going to be some sort of advertising behind this. Remember when she was doing Weight Watchers, like, five yeah. years ago? She's like, uh, you can eat bread. And yeah. they, oh, I love bread. Yeah, exactly. 
I love bread. Bread. Yeah, now it's like she's like in her garden. She's like, here's, I just harvested these Ozempic sprouts from my garden. Like, that's what we want. She looks amazing, though. Like, I don't care. Like, as long as there is, like, this drug is, was intended, right, for, like, Mm -hmm. diabetics and things of that. So as long as they're taken care of and there's, like, surplus i don't care if oprah's i don't care if any of these people are. that's what i said i was like i'm so tired because i feel like when this drug came out earlier this year and it became popular primarily because of the housewives yeah but i was so against like this whole like monjaro ozempic shaming granted you know there were diabetics who were like hey we kind of need this and the rich people are like taking it all that's where i have a problem with it but i feel like it's kind of like I don't know. I could be wrong, but I feel like it's kind of caught up where everyone it's there's there's more type of um, versions of it. It's yeah. not there's there's I think like three or four now. Yeah, you got Wagovi. Ozempic, All of it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, but like I was so against the like shaming of it. Like people were just like, oh, did you hear? Him? I think she's on. Ozempic. Well, then there's ridiculous lies because Erica Jane from Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. She hormones. Lies, she's like. I'm on hormones. I mean, all the ladies do hormones. And I was like, that's because listen, we're not women. And but I will wow. say a lot of my a lot of my women friends yeah. said, I'd like to get her hormones. Like she's not like it's like drop the skincare regimes, drop the hormones routine. Yeah. Because a lot of ladies I said, well, when you get past a certain age and all that, it turns out you're just not losing buckets of weight, even if you take the hormones. So something medical, like a medical miracle Erica Jane went through, instead of just saying, yeah. Yeah, I'm on Ozempic. It's, it's really like, working. Oh, okay, cool. And also, we saw what you looked like last season. Like, we yes. all have eyes. And I'm sure Oprah's not crossing the street and someone's like, you skinny bitch! Like, I'm sure <laughs> yeah. Oprah would be like, oh my God, finally. You well, know you what I mean? you got the results you wanted. And also, we have to. We live in a society where, like, we're all made differently. We all don't have the same, like, caloric intake. Like, it affects, like, I've been, like, yo-yoing all, like, I'm the Luther Vandross of podcasters where I, like, sure. yo-yo all the time. Yeah. And, like, I would love to not be able to have to do that. Like, my body takes in food and calories different. And also I eat cheese naked in bed and it catches up to you. But I just don't care at this point. Like do whatever you want. Do whatever you want. It's your body. You have one. Go for it. But this is a press release. And then all the hate comments of like, you lied to us. You lied to us. How dare you? The color purple wasn't that great. (laughs) You know, it's like, just relax. So what is she supposed to do? She she has to resort to jumping into the newest trend, yeah. which is um, drinking her calories, because mm. Ozempic does like kind of limit your diet, uh, well, limit your uh, food intake rather. Yeah, um, it makes you feel full all the time. Yeah. So this popular snack, Doritos, um, jumped on, and we're like, we've got it from here, and they have come up with a Doritos liquor um, that everyone thought was a joke, and then they were like, oh no, it's it's real. So um, That's, this is like end of days. It really is. Like, it is uh, leave the world behind. This, and I saw that movie and I was like, I can do this. If you read the Old Testament, they did say something about uh, Dor- Nacho cheese Doritos liquor. flavored liquor. Yeah. yeah, like that's one of the, that's gotta be one of the three horsemen of the apocalypse. It was actually, because- yeah, it was like something along the lines of like the 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 lakes will turn to fire, <laughs> which is nacho cheese yeah, exactly. colored. Yeah. But so. also, like, there's got it. There's going to be that asshole out there that's like, I enjoy it. Like, there's going to be like, oh, oh, it's, 1, oh, it's one of my favorite things to drink. I'm surprised it's not even like a TikTok thing now. It's like, oh, it's going to be. I'm sure someone's it's like, gonna be we're going to be Tide Pods. Yeah, the new Tide Pods. It's going to be the one chip challenge. It's going to be like shooting nacho cheese. Liquor well, up people, your butthole. We're going to butt chug nacho cheese liquor. When I was growing up, and I don't know if this it. is still in. Like, but I remember Goldschlager being a yeah. thing, like little gold flake. And I was like, Ooh, Ooh I am rich. Look at this. You yeah. know, it's like when I was drinking like whiskey sours and mm-hmm. things like, you know, and then you realize gold's like, just fucking give me the booze. Like, mm. I don't need the little flakes of gold in it. This is taking that to such a further step. And it seems like something that like only Spencer's gifts would sell, you know? You would think. Yeah. You would definitely they, they think. Would clean but, up there. But this is like real. The brand has partnered with the empir- uh, Empirical Spirits to release an 84 proof clear liquor. So <laughs> well, 84. That, I mean, that's pretty. That's pretty. Pretty strong. Pretty, pretty strong. And it actually smells and tastes like the real thing, minus the signature crunch, (laughs) thankfully. (laughs) Um, (laughs) And they say it's unlike any alcohol you've ever smelled or tasted before. (laughs) 
Well, yeah. No shit. I, I would hope so. Yeah. Imagine it. Because I'm already thinking what this smells and tastes like. And it came to me really quick. Hot vomit. <laughs> really quick. No, but there's a lot of truth to what you said, because like sometimes when you are like hammered and you just shove a bunch of Doritos in your throat and then you throw, that's what it would, it would smell like throwing up Doritos. Hot vomit. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> So uh, let's see. Imagine getting hammered through that and then having to tell somebody that's why you're hungover. I mean, oh God, if somebody wants to send a bottle of Doritos, see here. By the way, you're gonna. Love I it. will try it. No, no I'm I not bet gonna you're love gonna be it. like, it's no, not no, no, bad. No, no, it's, no, 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 no. I apologize for my comments. However, if there's a Cool Ranch flavor, oh God, all bets are off. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but what other? <laughs> or wait, hold on. Because this is the start yeah. of something dark. Yeah. Because now we're going to, I guarantee it, we're going to have hot flame and vodka. If there's a sour cream and onion ever, like, it just every close-up shop. I'm, my mouth is watering. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh. It's like I, how they sell those, like, ranch sodas. You know those sodas where, like, ranch. this is dill pickle. Like, oh, yeah. Ugh. But see, I feel like every couple of years... They try to make a flavor happen. Yeah. You know, I feel, let's see, past flavors include truffle. Everything was truffle. Yeah. Umami. Oh, yeah. Umami burgers like clothes now. I know. R.I.P. Um, what's another flavor they tried to make happen that everyone's like, oh, my God, you have to have. Shame. Mm. <laughs> that's, that's my favorite flavor of vodka. Um. I mean, every year yeah. it's pumpkin spice. Yeah. You know, I feel like every now, but like, they're like, you know what? This year it's going to be Doritos vodka. What do you even mix it with? But who's the guy that presented that idea? Uh, like, was he like- A millionaire. Hey. No, but the guy was like, like, is he like, like past due on an idea or something? He's like, uh, fuck it. Uh, Doritos. We'll, Dor we'll get it. Like, who comes up with that idea and then puts that into production? Because I would think it would like, I want to know that conversation that goes around the room of, was there any naysayers of like, that's disgusting. That's not what we do here at Imperial uh, Liquors. Like, or was it a straight yes immediately? No, because I feel like these, like snacks and um, fast food chains, they're all getting into the whole market of it's other branding. things besides the food. Like Taco Bell's out of control. I'm trying to think, um, you know, if, 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 if you're an In-N-Out burger and you open up and there's an eight hour long wait outside, you could be <laughs> like In-N-Out could like literally put all their food in a blender, yeah. blend it, strain it, Put it into a vodka well, and people would buy it, I'm Jack sure. Jack in the Box now has full, like a whole line of Red Bull, uh, Red Bull sodas and stuff like that. Red Bull drinks that they sell at Jack in the Box. Like energy drinks, but it's like no, a- No, actual not... Red Bull. Oh. Like actual Red Bull flavored drinks, they partnered you know? with Red Bull, yeah, yeah. exactly. And I'm just like, who is like going to Jack in the Box to get that jacked? Uh, I mean, but I, I mean, I know the age range that does that, but it just seems like- Get jacked at the Jacks. <laughs> I mean, Damn, that's the slogan, I'm sure. First. But I mean, it's like when Wendy's is selling Crocs and shit. I don't even know if Wendy's sells Crocs, but you, would, you wouldn't you would doubt it. I'd buy Wendy's Crocs. Now, that's something I would actually buy, Wendy's but what Crocs. Do you, uh, what do you drink Doritos with? Vodka with? <sighs> and will there ever be a time when you're at a restaurant and you're like, can I get the Dorito teeny? Please. <laughs> well, imagine like a show like Mad Men, and then you got like John Hamm's character of like, do you have the uh, uh, Doritos, please? The yeah. Doritos flavored drink. Yeah, exactly. And jumping off into Mad Men. <laughs> great segue, by the <laughs> Thank way. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jennifer Aniston has refused to use an intimacy coordinator. Good. Uh, for a quote, awkward John Hamm sex scene. They were both in the morning show. Did you watch the morning show? I did, at all? yeah. Well, it's I, and by the way, I was, was I, no, I watched it. My, my my mom died a couple months ago, and I yeah. watched it though with like that whole. Wait, don't laugh. That was, no, like, no, no, it would, no. It would no. The whole point. <laughs> you're like, I yeah. watched, my mom. Yeah. Like, she drank a bunch of Doritos liquor. I mean, God bless her soul. No, but 
Mm-hmm. That, there's that weird period of time where you're just there. And I remember that was the show I chose to start. To watch the morning And it show. was so fucking ridiculous. Yeah. But it, in that time period, it felt totally normal. And then the third season rolls around. They put Reese Witherspoon in space at the beginning. They did? Oh, yeah. She, like, is a reporter that goes to space because there's, like, an Elon Musk billionaire, John oh. Hamm. And it is just so ridiculous. But they have really good actors that kind of sell it, in a sense. And it is just, it is so bizarre. But, yeah, the sex scene, uh, she didn't need it. An intimacy coordinator. Yeah, she's no, a she's, pro. Well, yeah, I guess so. I mean, she was engaged, or she was married to Brad Pitt, who just turned yeah. sixty this week, and he looks amazing. He's yeah. officially Benjamin Button. Glad he finally looks good. Yeah. Oh, he's so hot. But um, she had a, a steamy sex scene with John Hamm, and uh, in an interview with Variety, she opens up, no pun intended, about the steamy moment <laughs> with the Mad Men star. She says, well, they wanted a, they wanted us, if we wanted an intimacy coordinator, I'm from the olden days. I'm from the olden days, she says. <laughs> um, so I was like, what does that, what does that even mean? She says that uh, that's where someone asks if you're okay. And she's like, please, this is awkward enough. We're seasoned. We can figure this one out. Yeah, grab me by the pussy, John. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so intimacy coordinators um, are becoming more commonplace in Hollywood, but some actors from the olden days, <laughs> the talkies, as Aniston called herself, aren't quite on board with it, such as Aniston and Game of Thrones star Sean Bean, who also commented that it ruins the natural behavior of the moment. Sean Bean is like, yeah, it's with that, I can't be nearly as creepy if there's an intimacy coordinator around protecting yeah. somebody. But I mean, like, what, um, uh, I'm trying to think if, if, uh, who else has she had sex with on camera? Well, I can't remember if she was with John Mayer uh, for a period of time. I mean, she's had like a string of really big celebrity boyfriends. But yeah, she wasn't doing like 60, 90 on Friends or anything. Like there wasn't anything that we, know of. that we know of. They talked about it, but. But I mean, her ex-husband was Justin Thoreau, who was famous uh, for, for the big dong, for gray the big dong and right? the gray sweatpants from The Leftovers. And now, I mean, we're not. We're not like new to what John Hamm is swinging. Well, the, well, I mean, speaking of gray sweatpants, John Hamm, this is a great story. He, you know, had was photographed a bunch in sweatpants with his like huge John Hamm hog. And he actually did an interview where he was like, enough of that. I'm not about that. I'm like, you Own son it. of a bitch. I would pay no to like, kidding. I would pay to have articles written about my huge hog in Me my gray too. sweatpants. Like, that's the fact. Then don't fucking wear gray sweatpants. I can't wait for the day when someone just AIs me with a big old dog oh, on like some, how, some like animated gift. body well, or something. Already John Hamm's talented. So then you throw a big dong on top of that. Yeah. Like people are given too much. And then he has the balls to complain about it. No pun intended. <laughs> See, I just, I just find and you know that Justin Thoreau was like begging to be put in the gray sweatpants on Absolutely. that scene. He's like, yeah, please. This yeah, I'll run around. Shows off my huge dong. And Jennifer Aniston's like, I got this. Hold my Doritos vodka. It would be great if that scene was completely awkward, though. Like she didn't use but what an image. Was the and she scene doesn't for know. those who haven't seen it. They do you? have a wild sex scene: the billionaire and the reporter, okay. and they're like, and, and John Hamm has his nipples pierced Hot. in it, and uh, it's a lot. But it, it would just be does funny. she peg him? Uh, no, but she is on top of him. Yeah, that's what I was uh, wondering. Yeah. I mean, by the way, it would be great if this is like not like any, her intimacy is not like any intimacy that we've ever seen. That's what I want. I want to just... know that Jennifer Aniston is just a freak. That's what I want. Just like put the tarp down, yeah. lock the doors. Give me the Crisco. Yeah. I wonder if she ever feels pressure to be, like when you're a star, are you, do you feel pressure to like, I have to take it up a notch. I can't, I can't have vanilla sex. I gotta, I gotta go insane. I'm sure. But I feel like. I don't know. You know, I get that she's saying like, oh, I'm from the olden days where we. <laughs> but it was 30 years ago when you think about it. Like that is like it's been 30 years since Friends. Yeah. But the whole intimacy coordinator came about because last... of Me, Me too. too and everything. So yeah. is she kind of going against what they put install for her to make her feel comfortable on set? She's like, nah, yeah. it's John Ham. <laughs> yeah. You know, just just hit me across the face with it. <laughs> it's great. It would be great if the intimacy coordinator was filthier than any of them. Like, yeah. I need you to lick this guy's balls right now. Okay? She's like, well, it's the olden days. <laughs> God, <Yeah>. well. <laughs> Sorry, I just From one Gorilla King, John Hamm, to another. Have you met Shabani? I've not, I've not had the pleasure. This is Shabani. 
Is this who that twink was dating? Absolutely. Shabani was in season 15 of Survivor. Um, but he is the world's most dashing gorilla. And Very this handsome. popped up on my uh, social media today. And this girl was doing a story. And I was like, this isn't real. And I Googled it. I did my research. And Shabani is, uh, he is a male Western lowland gorilla with an extraordinary life story. He was born in the Netherlands. Join me, will you? Wait, what's happening? Yeah. <laughs> this, yeah. He was raised in Australia and he found his home at the ultimate heartthrob at as the ultimate heartthrob at the Higashiyama Zoo in Nagoya, Japan. So he stepped into the spotlight in 2007, instantly earning the titles of handsome, sexy, photogenic, and even metrosexual. <laughs> His irresistible charm worked like magic, causing a significant surge in female visitors <laughs> To the zoo. Adoring fans couldn't resist flocking to his exhibit and then enthusiastic shouts of, Look at me, Shabani! Or, This way, Shabani! Created a lively atmosphere around his enclosure. Oh. The admiration reached such heights that the zoo had to intervene, putting up signs to kindly remind visitors to keep their excitement in check. His allure was undeniable, and the frenzy was so outreached that it became a memorable chapter in the zoo's history. However, Despite so many admirers, Shabani is a committed family man with oh. not one, but two wives. <laughs> Sorry, ladies. This gorilla heartthrob is happily taken. So um, This is the new sister wives. It's pretty much gorilla yeah. sister wives. And is there an intimacy coordinator at the zoo? Absolutely not. No, <laughs> no. But the zoo decided to immortalize Shabani's charm in an official photo album um, with sales on Amazon soaring past 15,000 copies in just one month, the album claimed the coveted spot of the number one bestseller in three categories, oh solidifying Shabani's status as not just a gorilla, but a bona fide sensation. I'm sorry, a banana fied uh, sensation. Let's cut that out. No. Um, <laughs> Oh, so yeah, so these women, they have merch. Shabani has merch. He has been compared to George Clooney. Sure. Yeah, I see it. Um, but yeah, it is. We kind will of sexualize a anything. Like anything can be sexualized these days. And I love the <laughs> now I'm staring. It is kind of it is kind of a sexy look. I mean, I will say now that I'm looking at it in a different light. Do we have any more pictures of Shabani? And by the way, is, the, is the book, is there like a hat, like a little happy trail that goes? He like, definitely has like, his nipples pierced. Yeah. <laughs> it's, um, it's like a Maxim shoot. I know. I'm wondering if there's like a like a hot Shabani. Like, look, there was George Clooney oh, next damn, to Shabani. Oh, damn. Look at that one. That second one, he's like just staring at the camera. Mm. Like, that. yeah, ooh. that one. Oh, ooh. damn. Mm, Daddy, what's your question? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, oh, I mean, he's got thick Shibani legs. Shabani is. <laughs> Shabani is some like Shabani should be in season three of the Gilded Age. Absolutely. Shabani shows up. Wow. They're like, oh damn, all those corsets are coming off. So Shabani really makes like people, guys and girls, feel something in their loins. I think it's just girls and maybe young twinks. Yes. <laughs> I wonder what I I mean, and the two wives, is there any like jealousy with the patrons? Like are the wives out there with Shabani? I don't think so. I think they have to keep the wait, wives apart. Wait, there's all these pictures of Shabani and then a picture of a soccer player. It's, Who's that? Oh, that's Shibani's, his last name. Shabani's ex. How dare he gets to share the same last name? Oh wow. Wow. Yeah. I mean. I mean, yeah, it's a good looking, good looking gorilla. I would. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> Which I mean, just, she by Shabani. She, she by Sh Shabani's like, it is Justin, pretty... I liked you better when you were more twinkish. I'm like, I know. Yeah. I'm like, can we just buy a Christmas tree in peace? Yeah. Just leave us alone. All right, let's get into some Bravo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good. Okay, here's a question for you. Yeah. When did you, like, okay, you said that at the beginning of the podcast that you were like, I wasn't really into sports, but, like, how far, how much Bravo do you watch now? When I, uh, you, as opposed to when you first started. 
I mean, a, l a lot more, yeah. but there was there's way more now than when it started. Like I watched Real Housewives of Orange County when it premiered that night. Like I saw previews for that, I think on like Inside the Actor Studio or whatever Bravo was peddling at the time. And I was like, oh, that's up my alley. Like I knew that that would be a format of a show I would like. But yeah, I watch a lot right now. Do you remember seeing Vicky Gunvalson yeah. on the carpet? How weird, right? I really was at the Jeff Lewis, the premiere party. It was she, her and Kelly Todd and then Shannon Bedore. Yeah, it is always weird being a fan of those shows and then seeing them in, in the wild, in real, in real time. You're like, ah. I mean, that, yeah, she's my she's my Shabani. Like, I'm just like Shabani. <laughs> oh my god, it's Vicky Gundelson, and it's weird because you, it's, it, it really, Shabani. but it messes with your mind. Like, yeah. it really messes with your mind because you. I like to keep them on my TV screens, and when I've found I've like had personal interactions, it's sometimes not all it's cracked up to be. Right, right. I, I um um. I remember seeing Shannon at the party and we were like, is she drinking? Yeah. Is I know. She, and we were all like, is she drinking? She looked amazing. Is she drinking? <laughs> what is she drinking? <laughs> She's like, you guys leave me alone. <laughs> um, but okay. So I wanted to get into some Bravo stories yeah. with you that are now circulating. Sure. One of them is Vanderpump Rules. <laughs> Heard of it. I don't watch Vanderpump Rules, but one of the biggest stories of the year was Scandival. Yeah. Um, so this is a story that came out that... Um, Ariana Maddox got rich off Scandival. Yeah. Uh, they're calling it the $2 million breakup. Yeah. Um, what a year for her. <laughs> she got on Dancing with the Stars. She's now yeah. going to Broadway. She's uh, taking on the Erica Jane role of Roxy Hart. Yeah. She just had a book come out. She has a book. Well, it's like a like a cocktail drink book. Like fair enough. Single AF cocktail. Don't they all do that? Don't they all have a cocktail book? Well, she had one with her ex, and then this is the you know, who was her ex? Jax? No, Sandoval. Scandival. That's what they, it's all about. Tom um, Sandoval and Ariana Maddox. I knew that, but just I know. My God. I know. But wait, no, 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 no. Wait. So, so they had it. Was that the book with Danny Pellegrino? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that was Ariana and and Tom. Yes. And Danny. Indeed, okay, yeah. and so now she's she's now an independent woman and single AF cocktails. and single AF. It's called single AF cocktails. Yeah. It has to be, Good yeah, for her. Yeah, so I mean, she yeah made a lot of money that, yeah. this year. Um, but it it shocked fans. I mean, the show has got an Emmy nomination now, yeah. which is <laughs> okay. Um, and she's gotten partnerships with what Lay's Potato Chips, uh. She's pretty much doing the whole damn thing. Do yeah. you think the other castmates are pissed off at her? Because there was the trailer with Lala. And yeah, she was and she's like, like, I've never, I've never seen somebody get cheated on and become God. And then Lala was quick to jump on Instagram and be like, whoa, 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 that was yeah, taken out of context, <laughs> which I think it kind of was. Bravo I, can. Yeah, I'm sure it was. I mean, listen, they all made money off of this. Mm. She just made the most money off of this. Even Tom Sandoval has now made money off of this. Yes. Being the villain. So, I mean, Lala put a down payment in cash on her house in Palm Springs just off Send It to Daryl shirts, which was something she said in regards to Scandoval that kind of just took and hit fire. Like, so they all kind of profited off of this. She, Ariana is just the queen bee, but yeah. it is interesting Christine, the castmates and just people around are now like those rumblings of she's had too much. It's too much. Like if you get offered these opportunities and they're good opportunities, like Lay's right. is a great brand. She's always dreamed of being on Broadway. You would take every fucking opportunity. You Like it only comes around once. And this was based on actual her own traumatic experience, mm -hmm. but it is going to be interesting to see in this upcoming season, which premieres January 30th, how all the castmates respond to that. And I think that's what's going to be interesting is them slowly potentially get jealous of her because they're not getting as good of brand opportunities as Ariana. Well, she has talent. Yeah. Well, I will say that too. She actually can sing and dance and act. Like, yeah. I mean, that that is something. As much as we love Sheena's. <laughs> I'm going to Sheena right after this. I'm going to do her show right after this. I'm going to tell her you said that. <laughs> I'm going to tell her, Justin Martindale, you should do his podcast. And he just said some really interesting. He'd like to say it to your face. Have no. You, have you heard of Shabana, Shabani, Sheena? And Sheena Shabani. Sheena Shabani. Who <laughs> eats Shabani no, yogurt. This show has been for, it'll go into its 11th, 11th season yeah. in January. They have all been there from the start. And it is wild because the two seasons 
prior to this one or the previous two seasons were horrible. Like this was on the downward slope. Yeah. And, and they, they were all going to have to look for and th exploded and they got more popular than they ever were before. So I think a lot of them are still just riding that wave. But at the same time, when you watch somebody catch a way bigger wave than you. You're excited, especially when you it comes excited out of turmoil. First, but then you're like, wait a sec, I'm talented. Like, yeah. they, that's what I think is interesting about the show is it's all of these egomaniacs mm -hmm. in Los Angeles. What? Here? <laughs> yeah, here. Yes. Get your occasional guest mug now. <laughs> That's all we have. That's for my scandal. Um, but speaking of explosive, <laughs> we can't say explosive without Kim Zolciak. Oh. What do we think about this? So if you haven't been paying attention, Kim and her ex, Croy, are yeah, on Croy. and off again. I don't even know what they are. Well, they were like, they they separated and said they were going to divorce twice so yeah. far. Yeah. And now supposedly they're still staying together, but then there was video released last week of Croy losing it. Out with the I cops know. There. I felt so, I, I did feel for the guy because he was just like, you could just tell he was at his wits end. Yeah. He's just like, you don't even need to be here. She's a narcissist. This is what they do. And I'm like, Yes, it is. It's true. Well, the cop obviously not having seen any of the I show. Know. Like I would. He's like, "What's Atlanta? What's the house?" Like, he's like, "We fucked up our entire life. The money's gone." It was. It was really. An it's a wonderful life moment where I was like, "This is like <laughs> is George it? Bailey." Like yeah. he's. Just, but it was. Yeah, you kind of felt for him because. You know, we're all fans of Atlanta and we've, we've, uh, very familiar with, if you are a fan, you know, Kim Zolziak and everything, and it is all pissed away. Like yeah. their lifestyle finally caught up with them. And you can tell that it obviously is eating both of them. And Kim operates in a very different way. So it'll be interesting to see what, I mean, she already was doing that. Like, do you want to know what happened? Link in bio where you, but have I mean, to click. she was doing that from the first season she was on where yeah. she was like, I have cancer. Wait, you have cancer? And she's like, not anymore. Sure, and I, was, like, I, was, I was told it was possible. I was, I was told yeah, it was possible. I could have, I could have had cancer yeah. and, and like started crying. Yeah. And I remember, I will never forget that being like, what the hell is this woman talking about? So it all makes sense. Like Lincoln bio, like she's now made a fake account on Instagram selling his shit yeah. on Instagram. I picked up some great stuff. That's Did all, you? No, 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 no. <laughs> real, real cheap. No, yeah. no, but it was like, you saw this and there, you know, it's a big mansion that they can't afford to be in anymore. Yeah. And they were living so large. Like I watched an episode of their spinoff series where she bought like $30,000 in crystals on the side of a road. Like I was just like, that's where you're like, Oh my God. And you could just see that frustration. He's a former NFL player. Right. They have young kids still. And I do wonder, and I wonder this about all reality television stars, Vanderpump Rules included, is that I always say we have to take care of these nut jobs for the rest of their lives. Like we have to worry <laughs> yeah. about how they put food on their table because they are now like down and out bad. And it's going to get worse before it gets better. And we saw that. I was really saddened and shocked to see that. And uh, yeah, there's nothing good there. When it just takes its toll, like, you know, at the inevitable, it's just kind of, it's just sad. Yeah. It's and really well, and, the, and then the only other option then is to get back on Bravo. They think that's the answer to everything. They're like, oh, okay, well, I got to get back on the show. I mean, we saw it with Tamara on Real Houses Orange County last year. It's like, that's what, they all getting off the show, then it's like this just study <laughs> campaign to get back on the show because they think that's going to solve everything. And then you have like a Brandy Glanville who's just like, they made us drink. And well, I'm like, girl, yeah, you're on a show, do it. But see, that's the other, that's another tragic thing. Is yeah. that we, that what I'm talking about, like having to watch after them for the rest of their lives, we have to watch Brandy have a couple glasses of wine and get on Twitter every night and just start like speaking her, her truth, truth in a yeah. misspelled kind of fumbling way. And you do worry about her, but you're like, you go back to college, go like, this isn't a study profession. The, the, yeah. the boat is taking on water. Stop depending on Bravo and reality television. You know, it's a great thing to have, but don't depend on that. Was Kim was Kim one to be like I'm done with Bravo? No, they put uh, not on pause, but they had a spinoff series with the Croy and the kids. Tardy for the party. Tardy for the yeah. party, and that I think they had their last season during the pandemic, and they just didn't renew it. And then she was on an episode of Real Housewives Atlanta this past season, but it wasn't even a good scene. Yeah, she needs to do Girls Trip. I mean, she she actually she would be great on a girls She'd trip. Be great she on would girls be, trip. yeah, a hundred percent. She'll have a whole room for her wigs. I think but, that'll be amazing. But I just also want Croy to land on his feet. You know, I know. God, poor guy, just an NFL player with just like, well, I'm ruined. Yeah. Um, but uh, here we go. Let's talk into this season of Beverly Hills. Oh. 
What do you think Kyle Richards family thinks about the Morgan Wade rumors? Now, this has been a big storyline. Yeah. Kyle this season, her and Mauricio are kind of like, I don't know what they are now. Yeah. Uh, today, Mauricio was just photographed with some... Some chippy in uh, uh, Aspen. Influ so like, influencer? Yeah, like an influencer, yeah. like, old, like 34 years old. I think he's 20 years older sure. than her. Mauricio's hot, though. Like, Everybody let's be said, real. I love that. There's been like constant nonstop rumors about Mauricio cheating for like a decade, I've yeah. read. And everybody is always like, ah, oh, but he's hot. You know, and also there were Reddit threads about Mauricio, but they always like said like what a what a generous lover he was. Like even though he was cheating, they were Can all- water? Yeah, they okay. were all complimenting him. Yeah. Like I love that. They were like, yeah, he cheated, but he's a really- Really he's lover. a really good he's guy. Like, he's just Heart a really gold. love that guy. But uh, yeah, I think there. I think these rumors. There's something to them, obviously, that led Kyle to do this. But we've seen through this the, through the season so far. She stopped uh, drinking. Yeah, she lost a bunch of weight. She's been working out. She's got like six tattoos now, really tiny tattoos. And she, she changed has a, her wedding rings. Strange, and then last <laughs> we we found out about the uh, untimely death of her best friend. Oh, I know. Which was really, really, a, a really amazing tattoo. Scene, but then the new new friendship of Morgan Wade, who we finally met a couple episodes ago, and she's a character because she's like she is. She stalked me. My name's Morgan Wade. She is Doritos vodka personified. Now she would throw down on some Doritos like that. She would yes. give me more. Yeah, but you got think that real good. <laughs> I don't even need a chaser. But yeah. you see it, and a you're chaser, like, I don't even know her. This could just be a. This could just be a special friendship, right? Like this could just be because she might need it after the death of her friend and whatever's going on with her husband. You want somebody new in your life that doesn't know all of your baggage or hasn't lived through all the baggage with you. But this person was also like asked, how did you guys meet? She stalked she me. She stalked me on <laughs> like, Instagram. Don't lead with that. Like, well, she Kyle stalked me. Kyle loves country music. And Kyle, yeah. like, I, I well, do. Well, she loves, she loves a, a, a an Aspen hat, you I, know? Oh, man. Kimo Kimo Sabi. Sabi yeah. is like, that is, if the bigger the hat, the, the more, bigger to Jesus. Well, I do. I mean, I want it to be true. I want it to be more because I want Kyle to be happy. But also, I think how amazing that would be for somebody of her stature to say, yeah, I am bisexual. I'm in love with a woman. Like, I would love that. you. I, I mean, my God, we're going into 2024. Like, stop queer baiting everybody. Like, we don't care. But there are special friendships that don't ever cross over into going down on each other. Name them. <laughs> Name them. Yeah. That's, I, now that I think about it, I can't. Yeah. I would say ours is. Well, and also there's a big... <laughs> <laughs> Our friendship yeah. is not that. You know. There's a big difference also in age with this as well. So we've got a potential twink situation happening again. Wait, is Morgan a twink? twink? Is she well, a lesbian twink? She's a lesbian and she's only, I believe... 28 years old. She's 28? 28. So that's the thing God. that keeps getting lost in this conversation, yeah, too, no of shit. like, it, she's really she is a young. lot younger than Kyle's, Kyle. what, 50, 54, I 54 think? 54 and yeah. 28. <sighs> so I love that her and Mauricio Bob, are robbing wow. the cradle, potentially. But we still don't know. No, but you know what? No one's giving shit. Like, if Kyle and Morgan go buy a Christmas tree... Today, yeah, 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 the cashier's not going to go. Oh, is this your daughter? Yeah. <laughs> There's no shame in that. No, there is no They're shame like, in yeah, that. Yeah, you guys wrap your presents together. Show it to us. What you put under well, the tree? <laughs> put the star on top. Oh my God, Morgan would turn Kyle out when that like because <laughs> that well, and then Kathy, it feels like she's soft launching in a lot of ways because she took Morgan to one of Kathy's 80 holiday parties, Kathy Hilton. Kathy had 80 and <laughs> took a photo with Morgan and Kyle and put it not in a story in on the grid. But it the real the party, grid. not the direct TV. Yeah, party. no, no, the yeah. real, the, the real, real Kathy yeah. Hilton party. Tiffany Haddish in the background bombing the photo. Photo. Oh, bombing. well, you know, she yeah. had to drive yeah. home that morning. <laughs> she <laughs> <laughs> before she before she got the window tapped on in the morning. The yeah. sh Shannon Bedore of comedy. Oh um, my god. Um no. Yes. I just think that's interesting that even Kathy's now involved. Yeah. And I do wonder if this is something more what that thought process is that Kyle's going through right mm -hmm. now of it like just instead of ripping the band-aid, we're just gonna slowly 
put this out, see everybody's reactions, workshop it, and workshop. find the proper time. Because they also have a family. You know, they have a bunch of daughters. They've been together for 27 years, her and Mauricio. And so this is a lot, you know, but it's totally, I can totally picture it. I can totally see, I can totally picture it just naked. Oh just my going, no, no, God. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, well, wait, what does, what does this article say that her family thinks about it? Because <laughs> it's like, we hate it. I know. They're like, get out of no, here. I'll hang out with her. Um, Oh, everything's just open, Mauricio, because they're not denying that they are getting. I mean, I they're think it's separated. gonna happen. I don't think they'll if they'll actually ever get divorces because there's so much financial stuff mixed up, and you know, including the agency. Yeah, and she really did help his career entirely. So I don't think they'll. I think they'll be business partners and really good friends for the rest of their lives. But I do not think they will be back together as a couple. I don't either. I think it's like here the article says we're we're now used to it, and literally nobody is offended anymore. So I, I think that's everyone's just kind of like yeah. Do whatever one makes you happy. Like, no one's going to be like, oh, she's a lesbian. Like, we yeah. get it. Like, well, everyone. Yeah, it is 22. And, and yeah. also, we're in Los Angeles, Beverly exactly. Hills. It's a different, you know, it's 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 almost expected. Like, that stuff doesn't really shock me at all. And whatever well, makes you happy. And one of my favorite lesbian housewives is Julia from Miami. Her oh, and Martina. Uh, Julia. Maybe we have another, like, Kyle and 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 Morgan on the show, you oh know? Oh, my God. Could you imagine if yes, then, I all can. the lesbians just start, like, really coming for Kyle? Oh, I'd love that. Yeah. God, but it, well, now she's, Kyle's producing a documentary on Morgan Way. Like, Kyle's, like, giving this girl the, like, like it seems like she's really hooked her up with a lot of attention. Yeah. She wants Morgan to be a star. But I was like, Morgan's in the back. She'll hook up with you regardless. You don't need to make a documentary on her. Like, yeah. But it's that, you know, that kind of relationship or that where you're just like, you'll do anything for them. You're like, yeah, I think you need to be in a documentary. I'd love to direct it. I think you'll be great. I, I love you. Everybody will love you. Infatuated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, I think that's, so it'll be interesting to see how this goes long term. Because mm -hmm. That age difference will pop up eventually because that, I think, is one of the things that inspired Kyle to go sober, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know? All right, let's play a game. You know your housewives, but I want to see how well you know your housewives. <sighs> and we're going to uh, name off some quotes Got and it. you just tell us which housewife said what. Okay. And you don't win anything. <laughs> you just get to walk out here going, I know my <laughs> shit by Sheree. Um, Here we go. Okay. Take a Xanax and calm down. Oh, uh, uh, Lisa Renna. No, no. Take a Xanax and calm down. Erica Jane? No. See, it could be any. These are very hard. Take a Xanax. Was Lisa Renna, take a Xanax. I'll give you a clue. Down. Yeah. Wonky eye. Wonky eye. I'm not, I'm fine. No, I'm gonna. What? Who is it? Ramona. Oh, Ramona oh. to Aviva, okay. the woman with yeah, the, the fake, fake leg, leg. The yeah. original Christmas lamp leg from doing, Christmas uh, this Story. Is, this is literally gonna run me out of town. No, I'm you're gonna not, be fine. Uh, okay. The show's done. No, like, here we go. Because these are they're kind of vague, and yeah. I feel like a lot. But and Land was just... like, let's let's get them hard. Here we go. Not like that, but okay. <laughs> yeah, wait, wait, what are you going to, why did the door just lock? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, this is soundproof, right? Yeah. Um, your blood type is Pinot Grigio. Oh, uh, uh, your blood type, well, that'd be another New York one. Uh, so your blood type, uh, Bethany Frankel. No. Your blood, uh, Ramo, that, but it is, Bethany well, would say that. Countess Luann. No. Sonia. <laughs> no. Fa, dude. Kelly Ben Simone <laughs> to uh, Ramona. Okay, we're just going to do a clean edit uh, where I say Kelly Ben Simone. Kelly Ben Simone. Kelly Ben Simone. Okay. This is so. You'll bad. get this one. Sure, maybe. You're a slut pig. Oh, uh, 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 Kim Richards and Kyle Richards. They did it together to Brandy Glanville. Yes, yeah. Kyle Richards to Brandy Glanville. I actually clapped him. He's like, oh, thank God. Thank I was so God. worried. Oh, my God. Oh, he my got, God. He, thank God. He got the I slut pig got one right. The pity applause from the back. <laughs> <laughs> that was why. <laughs> well, my, I did feel my mom's presence right now. Oh, good. You have two more. Good. He's doing good now. You can't be a housewife because you don't have a husband. Oh, you can't be a house. I'll give you a hint. Yeah. South. Okay. So, uh, so <laughs> you can't be a housewife because you, you can't be a housewife because you don't got a husband. Uh, Nene. Leaks. No. But same cast. Uh, Cherie Wetfield. No. Not Kim Zolciak. No. Um, fuck. Jesus. Who is the shadiest one on Atlanta? Well, Nene. Oh, no. Portia Williams. No, but like older. It was Sheree, Nini, uh, Kim Zolziak. Uh, who not was OG, it? not OG. Oh, not OG. Well, that's why I thought it was Ken. We don't even have enough time. Phaedra. 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 Two. 
they, uh, uh, I don't know. Don't beat I yourself didn't. up. You're doing great. Uh, there, this is, this is just, overload for you. you no, know, I just Phaedra I really, to Kenya. Phaedra to Kenya. Of yeah, course. it's Phaedra to Kenya. You can't be a housewife because you don't have a husband. And finally, there's no way this will make a clip. Like, there's no, no way. No, no, no. Yeah, it yeah. will. There's, there's no way. <laughs> Let's ruin Ryan yeah, Bailey. There's no way. And then I'll get the comments of like, ah, the stamp straight person. I thought you yeah. knew everything. Yeah. I trusted you. You <laughs> were the Messiah of Bravo. We believed in you. Finally, you're gonna get this one. Sure. Who gonna check me, boo? Oh, uh, Sheree. Thank, thank you for to giving me a softball. I bet world. that's not even on that one. It he just is. gave me. I bet he was like, oh, who did this one? Yeah. I'm Andy Cohen. Yeah. Oh, Andy Cohen did that one. She by Sharabi okay. to the world. Yes. Who? So that's like a solid 40%. Mm -hmm. that that's was amazing. Good. That's really good. You know what? Good. When I threw, you had no idea this was happening. Yeah, but come so, on. No. I, I should have, but I. And, I would have never, I wouldn't have gotten any of these right. No, you're setting me off into my holiday break. I'm going to like cut to a Rocky IV montage where I'm just like, what? <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Just like see it after like, yeah, this full <laughs> beard is growing and I'm like watching TV and just drinking Doritos. Oh, like, no, not like this. Uh, well, Ryan, you got to get out of here. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. I will actually see you on Wednesday. Yes. We are doing the Jeff Lewis Live after show together. Hey, chumps. Such a fun time with you as always. And and tell everybody where they can follow you, find you, everything got going on. The podcast is called So Bad It's Good with Ryan Bailey. We're with Betches Media Monday through Friday. Uh, we're on YouTube as well. The Instagram is So Bad It's Good with Ryan Bailey. A lot of silly memes, just goofiness. Yes. And then the Patreon, patreon.com forward slash So Bad It's Good, where we get you get more content. It's mm -hmm. way too much. Uh, you do not need to pay for the Patreon, but if you want more, it's there. It's always there. And it's yeah. very funny. And I'm so glad to know you. I will know. I said this and I said this to your boyfriend. I really, it really has been great to actually get to know you and you make me laugh like nobody's business. I was rolling the other day on Friday when we recorded and that really is just, I mean, that, that makes it all worth it for, so thank you. Thank you for having me. Here. Of course, of course. And, uh, baddies and just sayers, yeah. <laughs> we will see you next time on the Just Saying Podcast. Take care guys. Bye.